I know with I know with prayers and and um, uh, the setup. It looks like this is a religion, but actually, uh, Dharma, um, a profound a profound path of uh, transformation, transformation, and still transformation. Um, it's a philosophy uh, in an active way. So we should have wis wisdom lovers here. Love wisdom, right? That means philosophy. Lovers of wisdom, wisdom lovers. <clears throat> we we all we all like wise relations, and we'd all like wise. Don't you think? <laughs> so I'd like to welcome people that are um, here uh, uh, through the wonderful ma magical part of electronic transmission and video. So we um, invested a lot of money. They're very generous donors that. Um, a lot of us have a, a video booth, and we have wonderful three volunteers. So everything should be flawless, right? <laughs> but, but actually, I'm really forgiving on technology. I, I know that um, you know that it's just funny little things, but um, so far so good. So the prayers we do, I don't like really to call prayers. So they're. Um, Actually, medita actually, meditations, right? So in Buddha Dharma, we Dharma, we nurse. We just tell you this is this is the truth, <laughs> like that. So uh, we're saying we're saying the truth truth out loud. In in Asia, but in Asia, but in monasteries, I'm not sure about others, but um, everybody learns to read by read by reading aloud. It's not silent reading. Reading you you read aloud. So, so uh, some people think, well, let's get, why do we have to do the prayers? Let's get right to the, med the meditation or the talk because we're, because we're used to, you know, settings or something like, something like that. But, um, the, med the, the things we're repeating are meditations, right? Because they're just saying this how it is, um, or, or this is how to develop the aspirations to want to see how things are. So... That's why we, why we repeat them, and it's, it involves. Um, we also pay homage to our teachers, and um, because fundamentally, uh, Buddhists cannot tra transfer relation. They cannot wash away karma. They cannot heal just by laying on of hands. What? What can we? What, what's the only thing we can do? Teach correct, so um, we're not venerating our teachers like they're rock stars or avatars. It's just um, coming from India and Tibet and Asia. Um, the, the teachers are precious. Are precious. And fortunately, maybe I have good karma, but um, I I always seem to have like good teachers. Not only only um, brothers, but um, um, you know, you know, in the garden, and the red school, you know, and then, and then the high school. I just, uh, uh, I guess, a student in college too, too. So, um, I always wanted to be around my teachers like that. So, if you like, um, uh, went to went to a small Ivy League school, Middlebury, Vermont. Anybody been to Vermont? Vermont, yeah. Great leave, leaves, and so uh, uh, still kind of small. Uh, so the teachers, so you'd have classes, but uh, teachers is, would then have um, like like tutorials um, in their house. You know, it's kind of British style. You know, old school tutorial. So, so one of my um, teachers, religion teachers, um, who was also Buddhist, was Stephen Rockefeller. Um, Nelson Rockefeller's son. So, he had an interesting history. Um, how did he end up being a religion teacher? Why wasn't he running the company? Um, but he was a little bit of a rebel within the Rockefeller clan. Um, yeah, so he could go over there and just not just a lecture and be reading books, but you could just say, you know, you know, what, what guts and you know, um. I'm always curious, so you know how did 
how did you end up here? <laughs> you know, so, so uh, and two, people would really get to know, really get to know there was not just some abstract kind of thing. So we're here, our, um, particularly today, on our, uh, uh, one of the primaries in um, um, Tibetan tradition, uh, Lama Sankapa. A little bit um, um, lost before we do um, what, um, what's called yoga um, practice, because I think you all picked up um, uh, 100 deities DD, of uh, two, right? It's a nice text here. I wonder who put it together. Or are you looking for more? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's on there. Oh, oh okay. We can project it too. So. Is it on the computer too? We're doing both. Oh, so it's just uh, okay. But is it actually the same text? Oh, oh okay, great. Okay. Mm. It's uh, it's not the same. No, it's not the same. Te the same text. Mm. <laughs> Let's let's go with the let's go with the paper. Maybe we have the paper. Let's we'll just go with the paper. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry for people that are remote. I don't know. No. Sometimes people wonder, like, why why aren't we doing um, why aren't we doing we doing a silent sitting mission here at this period? Well, we're not doing it because actually we did at ten o'clock. Some people did, and also um, um, I'm sure everybody got up early this morning and already put in your three hours, right? So. Um, in the um, Indo-Tibetan tradition, um, Buddhism, people come together as a group um, to meet each other and to hear teachings and to have uh, verbal meditation together, but they're generally not uh, sitting silently together doing yogic practice. That, that style evolved actually in China, and then it was taken to Japan. Um, in the same way, actually, in Theravada Buddhism, people come together to our, our recite texts or generate generate um, group feeling and fellowship, fellowship, meditating actually uh, by themselves in the room or in the farm or in the forest or something like that. Um, so, when, so when you get together, the like social people are um, meant to be quiet, you know, actually. So I'm sure you've all done your meditation, meditation this morning, or the kind that um, that um, requires you to be really quiet and concentrate on something and not be, not be disturbed, right? So just imagine you've already you've already done that, okay? <laughs> In uh, Dharma. Um, we recognize that uh, one of the defining and maybe the defining characteristic of, um, of human beings, uh, uh, human chimpanzees or whoever we're descended from, is that um, we we know things, we we have some self awareness. Uh, we can speak to it. We can say, "Yeah, I, I know I'm doing this," or we can even deny it. I'm not doing it. Um, usually most of the animals I've acted with, I mean, I haven't been talking to porpoises and I don't, I don't know, but, um, they're not saying I'm not paying attention now or I'm paying it, you know, it's like they're, 
they're they they're always on. They can't just kind of like deny or reflect usually reflect usually. They're just there. But human beings have the beings have the capacity to change behavior and to uh, be awake in the sense that they can say, yes, I'm perce perceiving a red door. Yes, I'm sitting with a, bending with a bunch of people. Yes, that's me, me things. These are high level functions actually. And maybe, um, maybe other animals are doing more research. Search. Of course, in addition, um, there are lots of, there are lots of things where, um, we have, um, birds and, uh, different animals, uh, Horses and birds, they, um, that talking, right? So, or psychically talking. So, um, we do, uh, we do, we do recognize that animals do have different, different consciousnesses. So, it's not exclusive, but the defining thing about human beings is we're walking around all the time thinking, I'm me and I know things. things. <laughs> So when we're interacting with human beings, we we assume that uh, if we ask them, like, what's their name, uh, they'll be able to reply or they'll be able, able to say they're at least here, right? <clears throat> it's interesting. I've worked in four different um, psych hospitals and uh, generally um, my, my findings have been, even when someone's highly psychotic, in this country, people remember their social security number. Very really interesting. Not remember your name, but um, so in Buddhism, we believe that even in even in the most weird mind, there's there's still some still some sanity there, right? So so <laughs> you have to search for it sometimes. <laughs> it's there, there. <laughs> So Lama, Lama Sankapa is from that point is um, um, uh, a defining, the defining characteristic is that we know things. Um, I'd like to say the defining character characteristic is we love and we're loving, but of course, but of course, you know that most of our animals are probably more loving than people. Sad, right? So true. So we're, we're working on that. <clears throat> but, uh, but, uh, the defining characteristic means that we also get ourselves in trouble, trouble more, right? So, so the fact that we can be intelligent also means we can we can be morally stupid. <laughs> we 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 definitely have more delusions. You know, um, I don't think my cats hats have that many delusions. They're very straightforward. They're very loving, so they might not be able to. You know, do some higher functionings, but I can't either. I can't really do trigonometry anymore. Can, anybody can still do calculus. Anybody geniuses might be here. <clears throat> well, uh, we need to develop the wisdom mind that sees things as they are to fully release release the love and can we have. We need to generate love and compassion to get started. We need to feel it from others, our teachers and our parents and our community to get, to get started. Um, uh, through, through it all is we need is we need to doing. People are dangerous when they don't know what they're doing or they're doing the wrong thing, the wrong thing. Agree, capiche? So as I said to some folks at 10 o'clock, the, um, Way we way we accumulate knowledge is to have to have a right view and the right understanding, uh, and the right uh, understand standing means that um, we never give more on a daily basis. Basis, regular basis, you never want to give more energy than ten percent. Ninety percent of our energy has to be support and um, retained, right? Going just to the wisdom state right away. Here we go. So ninety percent. So generally, if you give blood, a blood bank, they're not going to take more than a pint. More than 10, 10 percent, you're a little bit. You maybe go fifteen, it's maybe big guys or something, but uh, it's gonna. You're gonna get dizzy. 
if you give more than like 35, 40%, you're dead. And we here worked on an ambulance. Dead, you bleed out. So the same way with our energy, our love, our wisdom, we have to accumulate and hear and create a foundation to deal with it of life. And one of the major challenges is giving, right? It does feel good to give, but it only feels good to give, good to give if we're giving. Lama Sankapa, you know, was a was a teacher that kept reminding people like, oh, like, well, you've got chance, you have to use it, use it, you have to stay. And he uh, epitomized this because uh, he did stay in balance. He was he was able to write and teach and create and create. Um, we do we do wish he lived a little longer. He he died uh, uh, maybe average to God. I don't know, like sixty two something like fourteen hundreds. Yeah, only sixty two. That's still kind of young. I mean, I don't know, like. <clears throat> My Richard died at 63, you know, had um, diabetes and then uh, kidney disease and didn't, didn't, uh, was getting free, free dialysis in um, Pacific Grove, which is nice. He knew the uh, hospital administrator and he didn't, you know, I'm tired of going to dialysis. People do get tired of going to dialysis. It's not fun, right? So, and then he said, I don't want to spend any more, don't want you guys to spend any more money like that. You know, I get it. So that's, um, he just, he just said, I, I give energy. So he's just right now. <laughs> Their body. <clears throat> so we, we need, we need to get support, and that's why we do we do the prayers, the meditations, the sutras. So when we sit down to integrate it, or or we sit down to give, to, we we've received, received a lot. So the first step, first step is to receive. Hopefully, we got that from our parents, friends, from the society. But uh, it can be given back later. Grow up, um, um, you know, as a. Uh, Deprivation kid, or even a privation kid, kid even worse. Um, many things we can we can make up for. It's hard making up, making up for them. Just if someone wasn't talked to for what the first five years, and they were kind of chained to the bed, that's kind of hard to make up, right? It, but uh, I've seen fant fantastic um, progress when people get lots of support. But when we when we've gone through a lot of lives, I was thinking our spiritual practice means some kind of self-sacrifice, self-deprivation. Um, you know, that, then, and we, we're, and then we're now we're trying to make up for it. <laughs> we say, oh, I've met some somebody who's kind of balanced, and Sangha's kind of balanced. Now, now I'm ready to get into balance tomorrow. No, it's it's going to take a while to get back into balance if. We've been working from a sacrifice model. This model, we're changing to changing to a middle way, which is what we do. Balance model. It's it still might take a few years. Fortunately, fortunately, everyone here looks like time. But it's a, it's a kind of crazy thing where we rush, 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 and then we rush to try to relax. So. <laughs> Sangha really emphasize the gradual path. The gradual path. So sometimes, sometimes you say turtles, dice. So we're intelligent beings. We need a strong foundation. We need 90% and it's, it's, it's going to chill. So that's why the emphasis is start as soon as you can, but don't start rushing, start walking. That makes sense, right? Mm. But because he had a lot of support from others and gave a lot of support to himself, um, uh, and 
did a lot of retreat, but even in retreat meant, um, you know, uh, eating regular meals and <laughs> stretching like that. You know, sometimes people do crazy retreat things. You know, they think if they kind of, you know, just eat ashes and uh, starve themselves, um, that kind of retreat, then they'll have vision, they'll have visions and stuff like that. So, um, um, I've known some traditions, and I know some people have done that, and they've been okay. But also, I've known people who have gone nutty. So, if, when we if, when we do a retreat, a number of retreats like it, it's like it. And, um view and you know we we eat well don't you think i think put your hand if you think we've eat well on retreat so oh, nice rest stops and so forth so <clears throat> uh, lama sankapa uh style of practice is is um, very steady and as I said at, at 10 o'clock, if in steadiness boring thing, that means you're an alcohol an addict. Just, just definition. <laughs> boring, you know, you know the drama. Yes. So uh um toward the uh middle of his life, he would already, you know, so mid-age, maybe in Tibet at that time it was like 35, he had uh, some profound uh, not just experience, but realization. And his realization was, oh, everything really, really, really does exist interdependently. Everything is connected intimately. It's so connected, I cannot find something that is disconnected. I cannot find something that could be only defined by itself. I could not find something that could that could exist by it, even have its own um, nature. Everything uh, is entirely integrated, like that. So, so he uh, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, really kind of um, poem. Um, uh, uh, praise to the Buddha for the Buddha for profound dependent arising like that. So sometimes, sometimes I sometimes I say, "What's the truth? What's the truth?" And I, I want you I want you to answer, uh, you know, interdependence or or dependent arising, something like that, like that. Um, <laughs> oh, so, uh, because it's easy to forget, right? Right? We we forget and we turn the turn the world into self and other friend and enemy, you know, a goal like that. And uh, Lama Sakava so when I realized not only did an immense amount of gratitude come from forth, but then I really understood the real real meaning of empathy and compassion. Because to feel empathy and compassion, um, we we must feel connection, don't you think? It has to be. Of course, we develop compassion while we're developing the wisdom, but the the true, completely uncontrived, unconditional compassion uh, is interdependent, right, with uh, the wisdom seeing that things as they truly are. So they say, well, what we really practice here is our wisdom love or loving wisdom. That's That's our tradition. When we're sitting practice, us um, usually sit still. Sit still. It's kind of sitting still now, so that you know the first thing we feel. Hopefully, when we when we walk into a temple down is a real a real sense of stability. So, uh, um, Buddhist temples are very uh, in Tibet, Tibet particularly. They're very solid, and people think, well, shouldn't we shouldn't we be sitting in bam? You know, things are a little are a little hot. No, the idea is that it feels kind of like totally grounded. So that's the first the first thing when we're being practice is sitting yoga. There's a total sense of sense of support, a total um sense of being held, right? So children really need need babies, you know, yeah, you know, they, they they need to be held, been established, right? right? You know, um there were horrible experiences uh, experiments in the 50s, right? You know, they take little baby baby monkeys and 
we found out and then we know now actually people need to be held and they need soothing uh, voices and they need, you know, you need loving eyes to see you and smile, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's support. But uh, then uh, the second aspect uh, is balance. So I'm always uh, uh, adjusting my balance, like even now, like, because uh, I get old, so I just start slumping. But then when I start slumping, my, you know, I constrict my breathing, right? And I'm in line with gravity. It really feels great. You don't have to set up. It's a set up. It's okay. You can slump. The other thing is when we're, <laughs> I'm a slumper. So if you let's see, let's see, move it away. Hell, I'm just back in my big chair, big chair, or this kind of. Um, but but every for hours a day, I want to train in in sitting in line with gravity and fitty and feel support and balance. And the third thing, the third thing is when we're with gravity, uh, um, and we're balanced and we feel support, then there's this sense sense of feeling uplifted. So uh, sometimes it's called joining heaven, heaven and earth. You feel like um, you know the, there's a vibratory quality. So up in being in Binge Island a couple of years ago, I met a couple that that um, built uh, wind harps. So these huge harps that when the wind would go through them, them they'd ring. You know, I never saw. I want to see one there. There is kind of scattered around the northwest. So the uh, the support um, uh, is uh, when when we're when we're only giving ten percent, you're grounded, you're balanced, you feel the uplifting. And then there's this incredible sense of spaciousness. Things do not feel like they're crowding in on us. It feels like supportive and spacious at the same time. Isn't that nice? So the upshot is that we feel completely um, hoarded, completely completely embraced and free. So Bam uh, Sankapa and Gurum Che and Che and other Shartha, Shakyamuni, Muni talked about that. Not, that is what Tantra, what Tantra lot, how this really sense of being embraced and embracing at the same time. And that experience, the spaciousness, the support, the, support, the balance, the stability, the uplifting, the uplifting, that then, uh, you know, we call that, then, then the wisdom uh, uh, is loving, but it was added uh, uh, something called maha sukha. Sukha, sukha is uh, uh, related to sugar. So it's um, some, sometimes translated as, you know, but um, um, then, uh, some some translators like Lama Tony Duff said, no, no, it's not bliss. It's it's you think good. <laughs> <laughs> like dukkha is everything like unsatisfactory. Dukkha. Sukha is everything great. So it's not just bliss. It's just like then there's the experience of just like everything just feels really good. So the basic um Buddha and sometimes called Samanta Bhadra, the all good, right? So not just more good, but it's just like, this is really weird. It feels loving. It feels, we feel connected and free and we get to feel good. And you don't have a hangover. So this is, uh, uh, you know, this is what um, um, uh, Nkapa, uh, fortunately in the first half of his life, really actualized and then uh, uh, pretty much took for the, la the last uh, life. There are many stories about how um, he died, died um, which, which um, well, I wasn't there, but, but you know, they saw golden light and rainbows and um, I believe some of that stuff. So the stuff. So that's. But um, we do have a lot of uh, documentation from some teachers that have died, that have died in the 20th century and so forth, who, um, um, of course, have passed away, and they 
uh, uh, stay in what's called tukdam, you know, they'll, they'll, um, um, by sitting up, which is extremely difficult to do. Everybody says, you know, I'm feeling sick. I just can't do sitting meditation. You know, you're dying. You're, you're just sick. So when you're dying, I was all like, okay, I'm going to sit up. And then you physically die or, you know, the heart stops, you know, no brain. And you're still sitting there. And interestingly, then um, even in 20th century, uh, they've tested like a day, sometimes two days, sometimes three, the, the heart's still warm. It defies anything we know scientifically, right? Defies anything. This, this is uh, with 16th Karmapa, you know, actually died in, you know, Chicago area, and the doctors couldn't believe it. I mean, just the body stayed, body stayed warm, right? Anybody dealt, dealt with people that have, generally, they do not stay, they do not stay, you know, and they, they don't smell good, generally, you know? So, you know, yeah, that's amazing. It's just beyond belief, unbelief, right? So, Kappa stayed, stayed, uh, uh, I think surprised even the close disciples, like, this is unbelievable, you know, firm and still, you know, still perfumed, right? Unbelievable, right? <clears throat> So that's uh, that's a very a very short way explaining what uh, the uh, the teacher that we're um, praising and wanting to um, uh, identify with the qualities anyway, anyway because the idea and our style of Buddhism is we just don't want to praise the teacher, revere a teacher, just hear teachings. Um, uh, you know, we want to be just like the teacher. That's the point. You want to be Buddha too, right? That's the goal. We're here to be awake, to be Buddha. That's not arrogant to say that. That's the goal. You don't want to say, I just want to be a nice per person. You want to say, I want to be Buddha, right? We want to be nice people too, but in Buddha. So we're saying, I want, I want the same realizations, the same qualities. You know, I'm trying to go over the qualities, you know, um, you won't have the same person, the same personality, though. That's the mistake we make, right? You will not have the same personality. You will have your own personality. Station, you still have your own have your own personality. So start liking yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another talk. What is our personality? Um, you know. Yeah, well, um, very, very briefly, like we can distinguish people, people's human beings, distinguish people's faces, faces to an incredible degree, right? Like if we're looking for some, or someone that we know, even in a stadium, there's a hundred thousand people, people, we can filter everybody else out and just find that one person we're looking for, right? Yeah, me, me, and you know. And we'll open, open the stands, and oh, there you are, right, right. Even even if we're given sometimes just a photo, or even sometimes just a general description, we have the we have the ability to like that person. It's it's really amazing, right? So um, there there are distinguishing qualities that uh, we have that that will still. Um, even after we we're very stable and gentle and loving and wise and good looking or whatever enlightened whatever you think of that Buddhas, um, people before and after will they might notice you know like you seem a little happier but guess what they're still going to be able to recognize you. Oh, you're the one to school with, and you're the one that shoved me in line in the cafeteria. <laughs> You know, we you know we still have our characteristics. You you our characteristics do not uh, change. So you can make a little bit more glowing, glowing. You're a certain size or a certain width. You know, realization isn't going to change that. That it's it's going to change perhaps how you you work with it you're going to be more inter more integrated in your own ma with yourself self and others but 
if you can't, you can't tell jokes, um, you're, you're still going to tell bad jokes, jokes after enlightened. But so we, we do, we do have a few jokes. We do that was, um, when I, I hope I still have them. I, I told them on Thursday, the actual day. day. Um, would would joke givers like to read the joke jokes out loud themselves, or do you want to take responsibility for your joke? And there's no other. I guarantee you, there is no other Buddhist Lama in this tradition that will be telling you Lama Sangkhapa jokes. This will not happen. This is new. Before we do this, because there has to be a little humor. We get too serious. Did the joke? Um, um, do, do you want to stay anonymous? So. Okay, go for it. Good, good. We were the mic. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, so Lapa was meditating with hitting with three monks in Mary, and uh, and uh, a prayer flag on the roof started flapping, and the the younger monk came out of came out of his meditation. His flag is flapping. Uh, Morgan's monk said, Wind winding. A third monk who had been there for more than 20 years said, my mind is flapping. Then Lama Sankapa, Sankapa said, those are flapping. We're sitting in a room listening to the Lama Sankapa talk about impermanence when a lock on the door startled them. One of the guys jumped up and said, should we go and see who's behind the door? Lama replied, no, I got it, but hold on to that. Sensing seeing the Lama not pick up where he left off, he asked impatiently, Rimshe, can you wrap up that impermanence thing before you answer that? The Lama turned and said, here's a question for you. Do you want me to come back as the guy who was just sitting over there or the guy that, that's about to eat lunch? Uh, you have to think on that one, okay? That's that's kind of a thinking one. That's kind of thinking funny. So that, that's a really good one too. So um, I, I really do like the Zen jokes too, you know, too, you know. So the those, but people like those, people like those. So I'd like to have some kind of, Dharma humor things people sometimes send me, um, you know, New Yorker car Yorker cartoons and we different things. We put them up, put them up on the bulletin board. Right? Okay, okay. So this this is like an important training. So so uh, you know, all my all my teachers said, be careful, don't have have this disease. <laughs> I go, what is that? I go, being too serious, serious, you know. So. With that, we're 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 just going to read through, uh, this beautiful uh, uh, practice to um, uh, Lama Sankapa. So, in the foreground, Lama Sankapa is um, you know in the clouds with his two main students, and he's emerging from uh, uh, Tushida. Tushida is um, one of the um, heavens that's pretty close, so you could go there. Um, and the the Buddhas on this plane uh, uh, descend from Tushita heaven. So who else is in Tushita heaven waiting to come bid us? You scholars out, out there. Hmm? Maitreya. So the future Buddha, the Buddha that's waiting to come, and that uh we're we're interested in coming sooner than later maitreya maitreya means love love the love the love buddha buddha quickly don't you think don't you think so that's so the buddhas are emerging from love from bodhicitta so the love that wants to relieve to relieve others suffering let's see let's see so we have we just follow along follow along there you can listen or read along too it says refuge in bodhicitta Chita. I take action from the three precious gems. Precious gems. I sell liberty, limited being, to, to call in an enlightened state. I reaffirm and correct my body to aim. 
take safe safe direction from the precious gems. I shall I shall liberate every limit to shoot for them, for them all in lightened state. I reaffirm and correct my bodhicitta to aim. I take safe safe direction from the precious gems. I shall shall liberate every limit to secure them with them all in state. I reaffirm and correct my body chitta aim. May the, may the ground everywhere lie as smooth as the palm, palm of the hand, pebbles and like shell and be made of barrel. May divine and human objects of offering actually arrange in those envisioned as peerless clouds, the Mantrabhadra offerings completely fill the sphere of space. Main practice. From the heart of the guardian of the hundred deities of Tushita, the land of joy, on the tip of a rain-bearing cloud resembling a mound of fresh white curd, we request you alight and grace the sight, king of the Dharma, Lo Sang Drakpa, the omniscient, with a pair of your spiritual sons, seated on lion thrones, lotus and moon, in the sky before us, and gurus, we request you remain with wide smiles of delight for hundreds of eons to further the teachings as the formal fields for growing a positive force, positive force for us in of belief in the fact and the facts. Your minds have the intellect, have the intellect, comprehends the full extent of what can be known. Your speech with its elegant explana explanations become meant for the ears of those of those of good. Your bodies are raised are ransomed with glory renowned. We prostrate to you whom to behold here or call or call is worthwhile. Refreshing offering offerings of water, of flowers, fragrant incense, incense, scented water, and more. This ocean of clouds of offering actually arranged and envisioned here, present to you foremost fields, fields for growing a pot horse. What destructive actions of body, speech, and mind that we have committed piling up over beginning this time, I mean, especially the beaches, three sets of vows. We open, we open the net one by one with fervent regret from it from our heart. In this degenerate age, you persevered in a phenomenal amount of study and practice. And by reading yourself with the eight, eight childless feelings, you made the respites and enrichments of lives worthwhile. From the death of our heart, we rejoice, O guardians, in the towering waves of your enlightening deeds. Hallowed, ennobling, impeccable gurus, from the clouds of omniscient affection that billow in the skies as your dharmakayas, we request you release a rain of profound advanced dharma to shower on the observant earth of us, eager to be tamed in fitting ways. May whatever constructive force is built up by this benefit, the teachings and all those who wander, may their part of the teachings of the ennobling, impeccable, those saying drakpa to be ever on. By offering this base anointed with fragrant waters, strewn with flowers and dowers and decked with mountain islands, a sun, sun, and a moon, shining it as a beauty field, beauty field, those who wander be led to pure lands. And forth this mandless mandla to you, Peruz. By the force of having made fervent and crest in this way, from the hearts of the ennobling, impeccable father of his spiritual sons, sons, hollow beams of radiate forth, combine into one and penetrate us to the crowns of our heads. The conduit of these white, white tubes of light to nectars flow, flow freely, the color of milk, purging us of diseases, demons, negative forces, as obstacles, and instant habits, barring none. Bodies become as pure, pure, and as crystal. You are Avalokiteshvara, a great treasure of unnamed affection. Manjushri, a commander under a flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, a, de a destroyer of all hordes of demonic forces. Tsongkhapa, the crown jewel of the erudite masters of the land of snows. At your feet, Loso Sangdrapa, we make your quest. So, so we said a little bit when I walked in, this is the five line. It has the same tune. We just kind of keep going. So um, it's the same kind of tune. We just added a, an, another line. So those um, people that are scholars will notice that we added um, a Vajrapani. So um, we can't see it if you're facing this way, but Vajrapani Tonka is... Behind you, it's a cloth, a cloth tanka, and us looking fierce with with and fire. So very, very fierce. Protect. We all need protection, don't you? Don't you agree? 
So it goes like this. This. You guys are good, good, good. Yeah, so we continue. Glorious, precious root guru, come, come grace the lotus eats at the crowns of our hands of our heads, taking care of us through, through your grace, direct us to the actual attainments of your body, speech, and mind. Glorious, precious, precious root guru, come grace the lotus eats at our hearts, it's taking care of us through great, remain steadfast, steadfast for our enlightenment. By this constructive act, may we quickly actual ourselves as Guru Buddha and thereafter after lead to that state, wandering beings, not, not neglecting even one. Hmm. So we'll do dedication at the end of the service and, and um, the photo at the, at the end, um, Jada Rinpoche and I are at the Vietnamese temple on Alta Arden here. We haven't been there a while. He did a number of different... Um, teachings and, and uh, ceremonies there. It was super nice there. You know, by Kaiser, people driven by there, it's, yeah, nice. So, this is another very American thing. We're, we're going to stop to have questions and some discussion or complaints um, before we... That's very special. You're not allowed to... You, you're not in Asia, okay. So, uh, with Traditional teachers, traditional teachers, even the one you're not allowed to come in. So, no, that's very hard, California therapist style, style. You know, it's like you're showing up to complain, right? Complain, right? You know, have a problem. So, so uh, Asian style is you would always like, um, you, you still have an obstacle, but um, it, it, it's not the llama's fault. Llama's fault, no. Uh, <laughs> and um, an important piece too is too is, is different than usually usually in the weekly uh, psychoanalysis style. It is never the mother's fault. <laughs> so so uh, it's kind of interesting, yeah, uh, because Lama is translated as you know uh, higher higher mother other la Kai, ma higher. So um, now we've uh, quite a few of uh, nuns, um, some Western, a few, um, but in the last um, 10 years going through the Geshe program. So they're now called Geshimas, <laughs> like that too. So uh, um, it's kind of interesting, you know, but it's confusing in Tibetan because um, usually the, a lot of times the Ma is masculine. So uh, this little aside for you scholarly types. I don't know if Dirk is listening because he's a scholar, but he would know. So uh, actually Pema, Pema is male name. We all know Pema children, right? So actually, technically, I haven't brought this up with her. I don't think I will, but it should be 
it, you know, it should be Pema, Pema, because that's, because that's, no, because Pema is the, the male thing, but she's special, so we're, so we're going to, okay. so this is uh, uh, our hair, uh, lineage, uh, lineage T, um, Jada Rimshi, I hope we'll see um, next year. So, so we have a chance to have discussion or questions. I think there are always better discussions when I'm not here, but um, um, <laughs> I could leave. All right, all right, Ellen's got up, so she needs the mic. We need the mic. Yeah. Was it Andrew that was first, first, and I just held my hand up or what? I don't know. You, you are. Uh, <laughs> So Lama, maybe I'm hearing it a different as different things, but I recall you saying at one point that we should only, only give 49%. And now today you say you said we should only 10. So I don't know if it's like the inflation thing happening or 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 if there's a distinction or if you've if I've heard it wrong or what, but I'd be interested in hearing your response to that difference. Um. So generally, you know, like 49% is like any more than that you'd buy. So that's the most you should ever give, really just 40%. But, you know, so, but most people, if they said just, said just, they wouldn't believe me, you know. So this is a little bit more advanced teaching. Just if you want to give more, give more, you have your capacity more, be more. Okay, so that's so that's why you know we say well, uh, you know, like I want to give more, give more. It's not like well now I got percent and get burned out, burned out. No, you have to capacity. Um, so the way uh, we increase capacity, of course, we do as we do more of our own in training and uh, so forth. Um, we 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 gather uh, helpers, right? We connect with others, right? So from Vajna, we would call it the Lama's Mama's Mandala. But each is a mandala. We have people um, uh, help us and support us, right? So it's it's not it's not good if people are totally alone, right? So um, maybe we can increase increase our capacity is is increase our connections and our friendship and particularly friends who um, reciprocate, right? Right. So that's why um, um, uh, you know. I can accomplish a lot here because uh, I have a lot of friends, you know, a lot of people are saying, I can help with this, I can do this, and they're sticking right around so the middle grows. So I, I'm i always trying to pay attention to my energy so I don't give more than 10%, but my capacity has grown because, you know, people have come forward, right, like that. Maybe I've done a little bit of training so I'm more spacious, but basically, you know, it's just... It's called Sangha. Community has grown, so we can do more. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, do you have a question? No. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, there's a danger if we just think we're going to get bigger, get bigger, you know, go into kind of a grandiose, a grandiose place, you know, and then a prevent a per place, and then you'll you'll do some crashing. Or, or and hopefully and hopefully not take people with. So we 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 get bigger by you know and in, in, increase interdependence and increasing our connection, um, increasing our motive our motivation too. But we we do we do call a chakra practice, call a chakra like gold gold cycle practice particularly um, to notice that that we have to be in harmony with the, with time. That you know. So human beings particularly are um, characterized um, um, by time. So the last words have to do with time and uh, effort, right? All composite things are impermanent. Practice with diligence. He didn't say, don't worry, be happy. That would be nice. I like that. Meher Baba. Remember Meher Baba? Meher Baba. So, or like, just be aware. So uh, that's important, you know. Uh, a lot of times, people they think, "Well, I'm going to get enlightened, and then impermanence um, 
old age sickness and death will not, you know, happen to me because I'll be enlightened or something, you know. Yeah, so, so even if you achieve rate, you're, you're leaving, you're leaving, right? So, so um, the teaching we do is how to be in harmony with time, time like that. So generally, actually, actually Buddhists are um, generally on time. Like Dalai Lama is always on time. He's not traveling anymore, but one time he was at he was at um in San Rao and uh, and uh he said be back at two o'clock and um yeah, he actually you know he came here. <laughs> so so Dr. Wong is always on time, right? Time, right? You know, a little bit late, I mean sometimes, you know, but uh you know, we respect people's time. Like that. Lama on yeah I don't know if you can give an example of a uh, question what what long Sun Kappa will ask magician so I don't know if, you know, say example, there would be speculation because, uh, uh, but uh, exact question, word by word, but uh, he he was always asking, you know, you know, Manju, uh, is, is my thing complete or not, or not? So uh, the important piece is, is dialoguing. Now, that, you know, so Buddha Dharma is a, is a dialogue, a lot, kind of Socratic in a way, it's a dialogue tradition. So, um, it, I just said, this is my understanding, you know, kind of what, what do you think, or, or did I get this, or, you know, I just said, said you know, I'm, you know, the, so there was some, there was some dialogue going on there, generally, you know, about, um, you know, correct understanding of seeing. Now, when you say understanding, it's intellectual, experience, experiential, um, you know, true vision. So he was, you know, kind of checking like that. So uh, Manjushi, like a ta talking mirror, right? <laughs> so we're, we're exactly reflecting back and, and talking back at the same time. So, um, a lot of times people are psychologized or kind of what I'd call secular Dharma wouldn't wouldn't admit that you can be talking to different Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, right? We think, well, the Dharma's great, you become more kind and smart, but dead's dead, right? But in our tradition, tradition, um, tradition of course, is people's um, awareness and life stream continue. So, uh, and that... Um, uh, you don't don't um, uh, need you know you don't need this physical body. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so that last last year, <laughs> so when Kansa Room she was she was here. Uh, he talked about. Uh, you know, Manjushri. So, because uh, he gave him Manjushri and also, and, and um, he's, you know, he's got a good sense, good sense of humor. And he said, you know, if, if Manjushri shows up and um, agrees with everything you think you've said, it's probably demon, right? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, you know, Manjushri shows up and they go, no, you got it wrong. Then that might be trustworthy, but uh, like that. So, um, we have to be careful, you know, we manufacture a lot of projections. But the Buddhist idea is like, uh, we believe that in the minds of other people, right? Well, maybe, well, maybe you don't, I don't know, maybe you're solid obsessed, but in any case, you usually believe that other people have minds. 
Okay, that's so. And the next step is, uh, if we believe that our people's basic minds are a mind stream, in other words, and that the mind stream continues, continues, in other words, not dependent upon, um, uh, you know, physical foundation, you know, or brain, or nervous system, that system that uh, can continue without without the form, because in Buddha Dharma, we Buddha Dharma, we fundamental mind is formless right then you should be able to be able to talk to people but i wouldn't pay a lot of money right off the bat to bat to psychics really so so some psychics have done but some haven't it's very diff it's actually very difficult to have kind of conversations but but um uh, uh movie with Richard Dreyfuss is um, uh, firefighter, airplane per person who crashed and then kind of in love with somebody or she was with him and then he kind of came back and guided her. What was the name of that movie? No, not the one. So there was, there was this God figure played by Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. And you know she kind of guided him, but, but then then he was able to he was able uh, uh, I'll think of it after the service. He then Richard Darvis character, who was the idiot that was flying and took too many risks, then helped the his old girlfriend and her new boyfriend because he would talk to them, but they would hear it as their own thought. Their own thought. Okay, so. Um, uh, so in in our tradition, you know, it's like now it's like it sounds there. This sounds this sounds like schizophrenia, but actually, if your voices are saying uh, good things, then we want to listen. We want to listen to them, right? You know, you know, like people and and on. Don't you know? Don't hurt other people, other people, and so forth. And, Oh, and sell high, you know, smart, you know, smart. <laughs> All right, like that. But, um, so I have, I have, I have a great respect for the traditions that that, um, uh, you know, do do involve uh, talking with you know, shamanic traditions, but also, but also, Christian traditions where you're talking, you're talking to people. So, but I want, I want the the people you're talking to to say nice things. So we still need discriminate, right? So generally, traditionally, um, Lama Sankhaba would be having a vision and a speaking vision with Manjushri, and then he would he would take that to his teacher. So that's the proper way. You just don't say, "Well, now I'm enlightened, and now I'm going to do my podcast." And so <laughs> you know, you check it out. So sometimes teach you know that doesn't sound. Sounds like your own projection. That doesn't sound. That's hard to hear, right? When people have very powerful visions um, that seem self-validating, um, I've lost students because uh, I've said, you know, that doesn't 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 sound like like that. That was a realization vision. It's an interesting experience, right? So we can't invalidate someone else's someone else's experience. But I said that doesn't sound like doesn't sound like a realization. So if somebody says, you know, I was able to blank my mind for a whole day, whole day, and had it not a thought. Either you do drugs, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that would not be good, right? That's really that's really a bad idea. So. Uh, uh, no, that no, and then that would you know, you know, so my mind for an entire day had no thoughts, and uh, Manjushri she said that I wasn't. So the, so then I have to say, um, not the Manjushri of our tradition. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, okay, that would be nice to be. Well, maybe that's another Manjushri you know, from the Midwest, West or something. So, you know, so okay, but. And people, of course, are insulted, you know, if you tell them that, no, that's that's probably not um, realization in our tra tradition, like that. So you, you have to be willing to have feedback. 
Yes. So what's the difference between a realization and an experience? A realization is a realization of a truth. Say what? A realization is a realization of a truth. And, and experience could be anything true or untrue or irrelevant. Uh, no. So um, a lot of time this just this just uh, 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 like I like um, what are the things where you look at something and you see two vases or this or you see two pee each other right? Um, what are those? Hmm? Hmm? No, but anyway, you know, we'll think of it. So. Um, um, one that you're able to see it, one good one, you know, and then you see it, but but really identify any particular experience that happens, right? There isn't like sh shivers ran through my body, or suddenly suddenly felt connected in, or you know, I I flew, and you know, it's just you see it. Okay, okay. So that's that's like realization. So many experiences that that can go along with a realization or that can build up and support a realization, but um, uh, and broaden, right? You broaden your container is uh, increased, you know, through experiences, right? So like maybe kids like Mozart or, you know, kids, kids like, you know, men say kids that are eight or nine and can do calculus, right? Or compose. But there, there are, as far as I know, there are no young great novelists. Okay, there are no nine-year-olds that have written War and Peace or, you know, or Wuthering Heights or something, because you have to, you have to. It has aligned with actual experience. So when the motivation and the experience and the realization uh, come together and they're and then they're sta they're stabilized, uh, then you have you have you know you meditation, meditation, um, uh, you know activity and that yeah the, yeah those five lines so oh, uh, when you're around very interesting people then uh you know you're not just asking questions or something they're just they're just their very presence and conduct seems to seems to be right like that but um the, this this too much emphasis and uh upon, upon like having an experience goes along with the realization like I have a really strong realization that I don't want to do certain things, but I don't have to have experience to figure out they're a bad idea. Unless I, so when I was the it, I did. Well, right now I should say I don't have to like stick my hand in the fire. <laughs> Someone can say, "Pars hot, you're going to get burned," and I just go, "Hey," like that. That you could educate me and say, you know, the fire is this degrees, and you know, skin can only do. This. So I'll go, "Okay, I won't do that." But you know. In previous lives, or when I was a kid, I, I'd stick take me on the fire. Yeah. So you're going to have realizations without having what we think of as the experience. Mm. Good question. Are we done? I think so. Good. Okay, let's do dedication. Due to the merits virtue of happiness, we can quickly attain the guru, living beings without exception, into the unmixed state. May the supreme dream jewel of each eat and not risen and rise and grow and grow, and may has arisen not diminish, diminish just more and more. In the land and circled by snow mountains, pure source souls of all happiness and all powerful generations, please remain until some times. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish and may, may the upholders the teachings teach teach remain forever. forever. May all my greatest years achieve happiness and may fulfill all, all their temporary, temporary and goals. goals. Lo song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of more profound, vast instruments to the fortunate migrators, 
Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshva, great treasure of object of discussion, Manjushri and Asro of flawless stone, Vajrapani, disperse and time post tomorrows, Sankhata, grand jewels, and sages, Lois and Dakta, and make the crystal drop of the heat. Thank you for requesting me to teach and uh, thank you for long life prayer. Long, long life prayer just doesn't, uh, it was from Chodan um, one of my main teachers and a friend of my teacher. Teacher. So that, mean, uh, that, mean, that means do anything. That means like, okay, like, okay, okay, I have to promise to come back. You see, long life doesn't mean just like how long, how long, you know, that. So that was a big, the big, uh, it's ability, children room, children room, Shay. And I was like, so a student, a student said, I'm going to do my life there for you. Do for you. So just, you know. But um, uh, I noticed that say, I don't, you know, it's like, like, we go out, okay? So, so don't do it because you do the right prayer, you pray. After one passes, you do the right prayer. And then, you hear it in the in the in between the Bible state and you go, Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like that. So thank you. Some kind of still. Hi. So I'm talking about guess what? Cookies. So next Saturday is our um, cookie neighborhood connection. And um, so if you haven't already read about it, what we want is a couple dozen, five dozen cookies, homemade cookies um, to, um, to deliver them to the kitchen. Friday or Saturday by noon at the latest. And then if you want, show up, show up and help us. Up. And then we're and then we're gonna pass them out about a half a dozen cookies and cookies per help for um everybody who lives on B Street and going around and around the corner and C Street as much as, as much as we can we have cookies for for really know how many bags we're gonna make and how many cookies there's gonna be, but the but, but more the better. So um, by by noon on the day, bring your your home keys. Okay, thank. And if you got any questions, just come and come and ask me. I'm going to hang out for. A while. So okay, okay. Thank you. We've had a, a fundraiser campaign going since Day of Giving after after Thanksgiving and it end day. And we a, a generous benefactors offered to match donations. So if you've heard about that and we're thinking of doing it, today's the last day. And, and you should have a link for that in some of the correspondence if, if you're on the email. And if you um, weren't aware of it and are interested in donating some, today's a good day to do that. And um, I can give you the link to that, the, the one that would go into the donation box that would end up getting the don donation match. So, and Daniel's got it as well, I know. So if you can't find me, so just a plug for that. And you can You can donate. 5% instead of 10% and then have it equal 10%. So that's good. My uh, John, people for lunch. So, so, um, and we do it. We're, we're, I, we're, I, think, I don't know if other sanghas offer food. You know, but I think that's a really nice, really nice thing we do, and just people bring it. You know, you know, and it's it's a very very Buddhist to to at least feed people, right? So listen and then eat, and um, they're right away. But you know, you know, start, I'll join you because sometimes I'm talking to people. That makes sense, right? Okay. So um, I like some you know um, person music. To leave, to leave, I pick something um, appropriate. Are we ready, I, IT folks? Okay. 
You're on. Omo araya pasaya na indi Om araya pasaya na